I mentioned the 85, right? I think you did. Pumpy 85. And then we have to mention headers. Track but... Attack had headers. We just bolted them up to the Predator engine and dropped it in. Yep. One and seven eighths long tubes. Mm -hmm. And you have JLT pulled in. Hey everybody, I'm Justin with VMP Performance. We are back on our DinoJet chassis dyno with Track Attack 500, our Predator swapped Mustang GT. This time we are turning it up and making some horsepower. So this whole swap has uh, had its ups and downs, mostly up, but there was one hitch that we encountered that we had to fix. The Predator has Gen 2 style cam phasers on the front, but Gen 3 style pickup wheels on the back. So we actually swapped this engine in and we had no VCT. We got to talking to our friends at Ford Performance and they actually had the cams on the shelf that would allow us to have VCT. They are the exact same spec. They are for the 5.2 liter XS combination that Ford Performance sells. So we got a set of those lickety split. Jesse swapped them into the engine and ta-da, we're back on the dyno with fully working VCT. Same cam spec. This allows us to do apples to apples comparisons with a bunch of different modifications on the Predator engine, which is what we are doing today. While, uh, while the engine was apart for the cam swap, we could not resist just throwing a VMP 20% overdrive lower pulley onto the crankshaft. The 20% lower should add about four pounds of boost. Stock, the Predator only runs 11 to 12 PSI. We should be up around 16 PSI now. We've also got our VMP 105 throttle body on there. And there's another big thing that we're playing around with too. Everybody is probably hearing about the intercooler problems, the higher downstream air temps. We're actually getting to test different intercooler cores in this Predator engine, and we are at a higher than stock boost level, which is where everybody's having problems. Perfect. <laughs> Joe's gonna make a dyno pull, and then we're gonna go see what we've learned from all these different changes and modifications to the Predator 5.2. There was not a, a lot of timing in the uh, tune, so we weren't looking for a stellar horsepower number. Joe, we were just really looking to verify things. So I only had 15, 16 degrees in the car, and it made 839, 684, which I was kind of surprised it made that. <laughs> Everybody that's, um, that's doing this with, uh, with the DCT trans, they're seeing like 675 rear wheel horsepower, maybe close to 700 rear wheel horsepower. So right off the bat, we're at 840 with a conservative tune. Yep, and super conservative. We did verify that our 20% lower picked up about four and a half pounds of boost. We made 16 and a half PSI total, right? Yep. From there, the knob got turned up a little bit. Yeah, we turned the knob up. Cranked it up to about 21 degrees of timing at 16 and a half PSI. Car picked up 60 horsepower thereabouts and about 40, 35 pound feet of torque. So it made 900, 720. Can't and complain about that. 900 rear wheel horsepower. Exactly. 720 foot pounds. Especially when we're talking about what we are dealing with with intake air temperatures and how quickly they rise. The way that the Predator air temps, what they're doing is they're pretty much taking a little bit of a curve and then a way more aggressive curve at high RPM and high boost where it's run away out of control, it only gets worse at that point. Exactly. And that's where we pulled the secret out of the box. What's in the <laughs> Yeah, swapped in the new core design that we've been working with a partner on and saw drastically lower water temps. Mm -hmm. Even with the lower volume pump that we have on this. Yeah. Um, so that's where we went from a, what we'll call a 50 about a 60 degree delta during the course of a six second dyno pull to a 30 to 40 degree delta during a six second dyno pull. This, this is nice to see this type of uh, improvement even when we're running 16 pounds, four more than a stock Predator. Mm -hmm. So this also, now once we got intercooler temps under control, this gave Joe a chance to play around with the ignition timing curves. Mm -hmm. And we actually made 9, 
817. The SAE correction factor was in the 895 region, so, mm -hmm. and we were able to do all of this pretty consistently. Yeah. One of the things we learned is that the power versus timing is very, very flat at elevated boost levels on E85. You know, I mean, you went from 21 to how high on timing? 24 was the highest. 24, I and very, very little difference. Yeah, we were we were starting to get down to the bone on that one. Yeah, and that's that's a situation where you would rather save a motor than <laughs> try to get an extra couple of horsepower out of it. So I guess in summary, in our what I'll call impatience. <laughs> For not having a GT500 yet, we did all this so that we could play with a GT500 engine, uh, the supercharger, try and find, let's call it, areas of improvement. I mean, I think this is probably one of the least modified Predator engines at this point. It's got a lower pulley, E85, a throttle body, and we're experimenting with some new intercooler cores, and we're making 900 rear wheel horsepower, mm -hmm. about 200 to 225 rear wheel horsepower over stock. The blower has not been ported, the engine has not been modified because the camshafts in it are just Gen 2 style pickup wheels with the same lobe, same duration, same lift as the regular Predator Gen 3 style camshafts. So it's uh, there's a lot more left to get us to that magical four digit horsepower number. Hopefully soon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so to learn more about VMP's Predator Swapped 17 GT, make sure you like, subscribe and share. We'll see you next time.